Hey everybody, as I continue on uh, doing tutorials on uh, editing, I've had a couple questions about frame rate, so I kind of want to specifically talk about frame rate for, for a minute here and talk about where that frame rate comes from, uh, especially working with digital photography. A lot of this is based off of motion picture film uh, photography, which, yeah, you know, cinematography is what we call it as a, as a general term. But yeah, the, the difference between film and, and digital video editing, because uh, now everything is digital except for when they shoot on film, they transfer it over digitally and, and the movie is edited digitally. But all, all the concepts of editing have come from uh, motion picture film uh, shooting and editing. So I want to talk about specifically about frame rate and explain exactly how that works. Okay, let's get into actual film cameras here, because once again, that's how the professional uh, digital film cameras work now, is they are based off of how motion picture film works. If you're familiar with film, let's talk about a strip of film here. A uh, strip of film, I'm going to put the little sprocket holes on it, and these would line up on the other side perfectly, but I'm just kind of spitballing here. So if we have what's called a film negative, Film negative is going to be film that has been chemically treated and has not ever seen light. And it has this uh, light sensitive uh, chemical that's on the that, that's on the film. So when it runs through a film camera, it has never seen light and the light's going to come through the camera and burn an image onto the camera. Uh, what they oftentimes do is that when they take a roll of film, when you when you buy a can of film for a motion picture film camera, it has got a roll of film and it. it's got this, this film negative here that's been basically rolled up on, onto a core. Basically have a core and then it'll have the film that's basically wrapped around it and creates this roll of film. That roll of film is done in a lab under dark circumstances where they put it into a very uh, dark black bag that's uh, very opaque. Uh, it's all taped up. It's stuck into this can, into a can, and then that can is taped up around the edges as well just to make sure that th that light does not touch that film because if it does, it will ruin it. So sorry, this is very crude rudimentary drawings here. So let's get into the mechanics of a film camera now. Because first of all, that roll of film, and it's usually done in what's called a, uh, a changing bag or a film tent, basically, uh, where you can put the can of film inside of the, the, the tent, put a magazine. A film magazine is going to be the magazine that holds uh, the film, and it has two parts here. Basically has, the film is going to be stuck into this uh, magazine that, that it that is light proof, and you're going to have uh, the feed reel on one side, and then the film's basically going to come out at the bottom of a little slit uh, that feeds it inside of the camera body. Then the film is taken up on this side right here, so this is going to be exposed film on this side. It comes back in and, and sends the exposed film up to the side. This is called the take-up reel, uh, so this basically feeds the film out. It gets exposed inside the camera body, and then the take-up reel is on this side. So when the film is stuck into a, a magazine, you do it inside of a bar black bag or a film tent that, that is, is light Light proof. You have to basically reach your arms into those little armholes and switch the take the film out of the can and kind of feel yourself around and and feel around and put it inside the feed portion of the magazine. Then you and you're going to basically make what's called a U here, a U shape. You'll basically have this little strip that's sticking out. And while this is still in the tent, you're going to make this little loop and then you're going to feed this up through another little slit that's on this side here and feed it up onto the take up reel there, just so it sticks basically and you get that going. And that's basically it. Once that's done, you're going to take it out of the film tent. This part's going to be exposed, and that's going to be just fine. Uh, but you're going to uh, mount it onto a camera body. You're going to open up the big door on this thing, open it up, because uh, this is going to be blocking off light as well. And you're going to take this film strip here, and basically uh, you're going to stretch this out. You're going to feed extra uh, film out. Basically, you're going to take that film strip and put it uh, through a series of gears. And these gears are going to line this up so the image, so the film is on what is called the image plane right here. This is going to be this flat plane where light's going to come in through the front of the camera and hit that uh, film. So I'm going to make a couple more gears here. Then the film is fed over to the other side of the camera where it has a couple more gears that will feed it up, that will feed it back up into this take up reel here. So basically you stretch that U out, pull it and extend it through these little gears here, snap them all together. And then once you close those gears, uh, you run a little bit of the film through the camera and it's set to go. You slam the door and once you close that door on top of this, uh, there's no more light that's being let in except for one source which is the gate on the front of the camera where you have a lens mount here and the lens is going to be stuck onto the front of the camera here. You're going to have glass that's in here that bends the light. Basically going to have this concave piece of glass that's in here or a series of lenses that's in here that'll bend the light. So if you have a point of light, let's say you got like a little LED right here and that light is shining toward the camera, it's going to spread out and it will hit that lens and that lens will focus it back into the camera uh, at, to a fine point if it's in focus right on that chemically sensitive film there for a certain amount of time and it's going to burn an image into your uh, into your film. Now if we take this camera and we rotate it, we rotate this around so we're looking at the front of it here. 
So now we're looking at the front of the camera here. Here's the camera body, and we got that uh, film magazine on top that's feeding the film, feeding the film down into the camera to that film plane. So here's your film plane. So what you've got in front of this, this is going to be the only part that's going to be letting light in in case, of course, if you open up the door, that'll expose everything and ruin everything. So what this has is it has a lens mount, lens mount on the front of the camera here, and then you have a very specific sized gate that lets light in. Uh, so you'll mount that lens on, and then this gate is built into the camera right here that, that'll let light in in kind of a square shape. And then that light will go inside the camera and will expose that strip of film right there, that one single frame there. We're getting to frame right here in a minute. But now if the film was moving through the camera and this thing was always open, you would just have a big streak of light just going across your whole strip of film. So it's got to have a way of blocking off the light so it can change to that next frame. So here we have the film strip that's going down through the camera. And uh, these are my little makeshift sprocket holes not really straight or even but you have these little pins that grab these sprocket holes and pull the film down and feed the film through the camera they're usually like little hammer looking like things like this mechanism that basically moves over grabs it pulls it down moves back out and lifts up again moves over grabs the sprocket hole and it continues that process and pulls the film through the camera a lot of mechanics going on here. Uh, but what we have is this little gate in front of this that's letting light through the body of the camera and burning an image onto the film plane there. But what we've got also next to it is going to be what's called a rolling shutter. It's so basically this 180 degree half, half circle that has a pin in it. And basically this is a black plate here. So basically this is a black plate that rotates in a circular fashion like this that will rotate. So what's gonna happen with this rolling shutter here is basically, let me change my anchor point so I can kind of demonstrate this. Uh, we're basically, this thing has basically got a pin through it and it's going to rotate. So as this rolling shutter uh, rotates, it basically, it basically moves across the film plane like this and right there, it's blocking off that square. So it, it is no longer, that, let's say that image has been recorded and now what's gonna happen is while this is blocking here, uh, this, pin, this little hammer is gonna grab the sprocket hole, pull it down and this film is going to shift downwards to expose the next frame. So basically, while the film is being blocked, this sprocket sticks inside of the inside the the perforations on the film, and then it drags it down. So this frame has been exposed, and then this rolling shutter will will uh, roll off of it, and now it will progressively. This is where the word progressive scan comes from. It will progressively uh, expose the next frame. So when it's like this, so while that is rotated off there, it's going to record the next film frame. And then after the image is burned in there, and the, the film is holding still, by the way, while it's burning that image in there, and then the rolling shutter rolls over the film again, then the film is moved down, and then the rolling shutter moves off of it, and then it burns the next image in. Then once the film has been moved down, the rolling shutter moves, and it exposes the next frame. And that way, you have a sequence of frames, one frame, and they, these are just individual still images, and they play in sequence one after the other, which creates the illusion of motion. And that's basically how a film camera works, and it does this 24 times per second. We call it 24 frames per second. So it's taking 24 pictures, still images per second, and then when you play them back in sequence, once again, it creates the illusion of motion. Digital film cameras have been based off of this technology, and they kind of copy the frame rate. They uh, uh, copy exposure time as well. This is called a 180 degree shutter here. So this basically means that for 24 frames per second, when you're taking 24 pictures per second, every frame in this instance with this shutter angle is getting recorded for half the time. So if it's recording for half the time at 24 frames per second, that means every frame is being exposed for 1 48th of a second. So that is basically your shutter speed per frame right there is 1 48th of a second. In, in motion picture photography, they call this 180 degree uh, shutter angle. Keep in mind that film cameras also have two film plates in here. They're both just pressed against each other like this. And if you want to change the exposure time and cut that exposure time in half, within the mechanism of the, of the film camera, you can rotate uh, one of these plates and it slides like this and you basically have, uh, now instead of 180 degree, you have a 90 degree shutter angle. And that's basically going to be the equivalent of a 196 uh, shutter speed, will be a 90 degree angle. And if you rotate this even more, and do that and cut it in half again. Sorry, my circles aren't perfect here. Cut that in half again. That's going to be a 45 degree shutter angle. And you're going, so that even cuts the time in half again. And that way you basically get choppier and less motion blur, which gives you kind of choppier images if, if that's what you're going for. And you can find these shutter speeds charts online to find the equivalents. But if you're working with film, if you're working with a professional digital camera, uh, if you choose a shutter angle, that basically means the standard is going to be 180 degree shutter angle is going to be the equivalent of 148. This is if you're shooting at 24 frames per second. 
that 24 frames per second 180 degree will be 1 48th of shutter of a shutter speed per frame every frame is recorded for 1 48th of a second that's basically half time a 90 degree shutter angle is going to be the equivalent of 1 96 and a 45 degree shutter angle is going to be the equivalent of 1 192nd of a, of a second there so each time cutting uh, the exposure time in half each time. So just kind of showing per frame how long each frame can be exposed for. It's, uh, kind of some standards inside of a motion picture film camera and how that translates to digital uh, video and film uh, technology. Having kind of learned this concept, uh, let's go into Premiere now. I'm going to show you a little bit about how frame rate, rate works inside of Premiere here. So I'm going to go to a scene folder here and we're going to pull out a specific shot and double click on a shot and open it up. This is one shot right here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about time code right here. So it starts with the slate, and as we skim through it, uh, this clip has a duration of 48 seconds and 19 frames. And this was shot at 24 frames per second. If you select the clip down here in, in, in the timeline, it shows right here that this is a true 24 frames per second progressive scan. There's that P, that's what the P stands for with progressive scan, is the, the sensor is simulating film where it's progressively uh, scanning the, the image from top to bottom and saving it as an individual frame. So I'm going to pull this clip and drag it onto the timeline here uh, so we can just kind of observe this clip here. So once again, this is 48, 48 seconds, 19 frames. Let's talk about time code. Basically, you have your hours meter. The, two, the first two zeros is your hour meter. Uh, the second two are your minutes meter, the seconds meter, and the frames meter. Oftentimes you'll see it displayed like this, represented uh, like this, like this where you have your first hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Down here, this is an arbitrary time code uh, that was shot on this uh, camera where it's just running a, this, this arbitrary time code. So every um, shot that you shoot has its own individual unique time code. Now, as we move down to the timeline here, and you'll notice on the timeline, this is at 1 minute 18 seconds in the timeline here. As I use my arrows key, arrow keys to the right and to the left, basically this is what it does. It steps through one frame at a time. Each one of these is an individual still image, and it's playing through each one of these, and it connects them all together as a movie file. So that's what a movie file is, is a collection of these still images, one after the other. Let's move into the shot here a little bit. So if you're trying to edit to the frame uh, inside of Premiere or another editing software, you're going to use your arrow tools here to go left and right, and each one is an individual picture. So that is a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame. But it recorded these all in sequence and plays them back to create the illusion of motion as we see these frames playing one after the other. We, we feel like we are watching movement uh, playing before our eyes. Now notice here on my timeline, I've got uh, the, the frame that I'm on is one minute, 18 seconds and 22 frames. Watch what happens as I arrow to the right and this gets up to 23. There's frame 23. What it's going to do is I arrow to the next one. The 24th frame is represented by 00. zero. Notice it changed the second meter up to 19 seconds rather than 18 when it hits the 00. zero. And then this will count through the next 23 frames, hitting my arrow key one at a time. 23 resets to 0 and it updates the minute meter to 20 seconds. So basically, you do have the, the capability of editing exactly to the frame. Now, when we're talking about the importance of editing to the frame, I want to recommend a really excellent documentary. Uh, this can be found on Vimeo. I'll put the link in the description. But this documentary is called The Cutting Edge, The uh, Magic of Movie Editing. It's fantastic. It's, it was done by the uh, BBC. It's, it's about an hour and a half long, and it goes through the history of, uh, of editing. The, what, the part that I want to specify specifically comes in at time code 725. You can, I, this is not my work, so I'm not going to post it in here. Uh, but this talks about, but basically, this, this talks about why one frame counts. It talks about being, having the ability to edit to the frame. And it has interviews with uh, Steven Spielberg, with uh, Quentin Tarantino, and lots of different editors as well uh, that kind of talk about the importance of editing to a frame. And that ability you have in pretty much any professional editing software that you're working with. You have the ability of editing to the frame. Now, uh, future episodes, I'm, get, I'm getting more and more into editing and kind of editing technique. But like I said, if you have something here on the timeline and you want to cut exactly to the frame, well, first of all, you can go up into your source monitor if you're going to uh, edit something and put it down in the timeline. Let's say I want this edit to happen in a very specific part here. I want to start where the camera is starts moving right here so right there and now I can arrow back one frame at a time and get it right where that camera just barely starts to move now I'm going to arrow forward and right there I'm looking at this cup right here on the edge of the frame and right here it barely starts to move I want to begin that shot right there I'm going to hit I for endpoint I'm going to press this let it play through and I'm going to get it on an exact frame when I end it as well right when that light turns on maybe a beat and maybe before her arm starts falling out of the uh, off the light here. So right there, I arrowed back to where her arm is uh, holding still. I'm going to arrow forward, 
and there it's barely starting to move. So you can get this on like a r r very, very specific frame. Hit O for out point, and now I've got an exact amount of frames there. And this, the duration of this clip is now 9 seconds and 6 frames, and I can drop that down in my timeline. Hit period and drop it down to my timeline, and I've got that exact cut down inside my timeline now. So basically that's how frame rate works, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know.